Paddy. And today I'm going for a walk in the park. I've got my rucksack and a packed lunch. Oh, I've got a cheese sandwich, banana, apple. Oh, and yogurt with honey. Do you know how honey's made? That's right, bees make honey. I've seen a few flying around here today. Can you spot one? They're collecting a liquid called nectar that they take back to a beehive to turn into honey. But do you know how a beehive works? Let's find out. How does it work? Beehive. There are lots of different beehives in all sorts of places, like fields, forests, and even people's gardens. But the one I'm going to visit is on the top of a building. In the middle of a city! You must never play or look inside a beehive without a grown-up, but I've got special permission to look inside these hives. But before I show you, first I need to get on a special beekeeping suit. Come on! Hi Tim! Hi Maddie! Tim is the beekeeper here and he's going to be helping me show you inside a beehive. The beehive is where bees find shelter, lay their eggs, feed the baby bees, and it's where yummy honey is made. A group of bees inside a hive is called a colony, and every colony has just one queen bee. She's in charge, and she lives in this bottom box just here. There could be as many as 50,000 bees inside the hive, and most of them are female worker bees. And look, she's just landed on my hand. To find out how the worker bees use a hive to store their honey, I think we need to take a closer look. The bee leaves the hive to find a flower filled with nectar. She uses her long tube-shaped tongue to suck the liquid nectar from the flower. The bee stores the nectar in her extra honey stomach, called a crop, and makes her way back to the hive. When the bee gets to the hive, she does the waggle dance to tell the other bees where she has found the nectar. The bee then passes the nectar into the mouth of another bee. And another bee, and another bee, quite a few times. Each time the nectar passes through the honey stomach of each bee, the nectar mixes with an enzyme. The enzyme breaks down the nectar and turns it into a simple sugar. The last bee in the chain spreads the mixture into the wax honeycomb. Because the mixture is still runny, the bees fan the honeycomb with their wings to dry it out. This is called evaporation. When the water has evaporated, the bees put a layer of wax over it, called beeswax, to seal the honey, like a lid. How clever is that? Why don't we try to see things a little bit more clearly with one of my special cameras? This is my special slow motion camera. And it lets us see things that happen really quickly, much slower. So, here goes. Can you see those yellow blobs on their legs? Well, that's pollen that gets trapped on little parts on their legs called pollen baskets. That is amazing, but I think it's about time we looked inside the hive. You should never open a beehive yourself, so I've asked beekeeper Tim to show us. And this is the crown board, the part which keeps the bees safe and dry inside. And now Tim's going to use this tool here, it's called a hive tool. And listen, can you hear that crack? That's Tim breaking the seal. And inside there are 11 frames and this is where the bees store the honey. <gasps> Whoa. It's so heavy and that's because it is full of honey. 
I wonder if any of these bees are doing the waggle dance now to let the other bees know where the good nectar is. When the frames first go in the hive, they actually look like this. Can you see the difference? Each of these is called a cell. How many sides does it have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides, that's a hexagon. And a hexagon is a brilliant shape because they fit together perfectly, meaning there are no gaps. So the bees can store as much honey as possible. Do you know, these bees eat about 34 kilograms of the honey they make every year. That's about the same weight as two of you. But there's still a lot left over, and Tim collects the extra honey for us to enjoy. Fresh out of the hive. Mmm. That is delicious. I loved seeing how beehives work. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name of a group of bees? That's right, it's a colony. Did you hear the sound the hive made when we lifted the lid? And did you see the bees flapping their wings on my special slow motion camera? Time for a snack. I'm going to have an apple and a drink from a mug. If you've ever had a warm drink, like a hot chocolate for a treat, then you might have used a mug. Listen to the sound it makes. Do you know how a mug is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Mug. To make a mug, we start in a place like this. A pottery. They make all sorts of different things here. Teapots, plates and bowls, and of course, lots of mugs. They make blue ones, green ones, spotty ones, and even stripy ones. Which one is your favorite? I think I like the stripy one best. And today, we're gonna find out how a stripy mug is made. To make a mug, first we need our main material, clay. The wet, sticky clay is dug out of the ground at a place called a quarry and is brought to the factory to dry out. When it's ready, diggers drop it into a machine called a milling cylinder. When water is added, it's very, very noisy. The wet, gloopy mixture that comes out of the milling cylinder is called slurry and it's bounced around really quickly to make it smooth. The smooth, wet mixture is pumped into this machine. It works like a press, and large pieces of material with tiny holes in it squeeze everything together, and that gets rid of all of the extra water. The big slabs of dry clay then drop down into a machine called the rotary feeder, where they're cut up. I put my special camera on a long pole so that we can get a better look inside the rotary feeder. Here we go. Look at that. It's like big slices of cheese being grated. The clay then goes downstairs. The small pieces are then squashed here at the pug mill and it comes out in a long sausage shape that are then chopped into individual logs like this. It's really heavy, but this will make 50 mugs. Then the robots take over. They put a slice of clay into a mould which is the same shape as a mug. Can you see that steel roller raising up and down? It spins round and round to squish the clay to the side of the mould. Next, the mug-shaped clay is taken out of the moulds. They spun around really quickly, but there is still something missing. That's right, a handle. It's Gail's job to stick the handles on. They use a mixture of watery clay and salt. It's called slip. The mugs spend about two and a half hours inside this dryer. Can you see how they're getting lighter as the clay dries out? 
look how many there are. Can you guess how many mugs are being made in this factory today? 7,000 mugs. Were you close? And every single one has to be made super smooth by hand using a diddling stick before they go into a really hot kiln to be made hard. This is a biscuit kiln. It's a little bit like an oven you might have at home in your kitchen to bake biscuits in. Only this one is much longer and much, much hotter. The biscuit kiln is heated to a thousand degrees. That's four times hotter than your oven at home. And those mugs will be in there for 18 hours. When the mugs come out of the kiln, they are really hard. Painted. First, on the inside. The mug sits on a spinning plate and a liquid called a glaze is poured in. And that spinning movement makes the glaze swirl around the inside of the mug. But what about the outside? It's Susan's job to hand paint the mugs in colourful patterns. Can you remember what pattern we're making today? That's right, stripes. Isn't it cool? The mugs are then dipped into a glaze coating. But where have all the stripes gone? They are still there, but the mugs need to go back into the kiln so the glaze can be makes it go clear so you can see the stripes again. And here we have a finished mug. The glaze is hard, strong and shiny. And just look how fantastic those colours turned out to be. All of these mugs are perfect, but if there were any with cracks in, they're recycled. But now, I think it's time for a cup of tea. I loved seeing how mugs are made. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember what the lumps of clay were called to make each mug? That's right, they're called logs. Did you hear the sound of the mug when it came out of the kiln? And did you see my special camera when we looked inside the milling cylinders? Look at all that clay! So the next time you drink from a mug or see a grown-up with a cup of tea, you'll know how the mug was made. And when you see a bee buzzing around from flower to flower, you'll know how its hive works. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things.